Hello, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now recently Arm had an online event which it called Vision Day where it talks about its vision for the, its technology, its ecosystem, where things are going over the next few years and as part of that it announced it is ready to launch Arm V9, the ninth iteration of the Arm architecture. And I'm betting that Apple are going to use it in their next iPhone. So if you want to find out more, please well, let me explain. So right back to the beginning when there was the first ARM chip, there was obviously a design document which described the architecture of that CPU, the instructions, how the memory was laid out, how interrupts are handled and so on. And over the years that document has been improved and things of features have been added and it's grown so that you had ARM v1 and then ARM v2 and ARM v3 and so on. And now of course we're at ARM v8. And ARM v8 is the standard that we use nowadays and we find it absolutely everywhere in our iPhones, uh, in Android phones, in the MacBook Pro with the M1 processor, in the Surface Pro X with the Qualcomm laptop processor. Uh, obviously it runs Linux, it runs Windows, it runs Mac OS, it runs Android, it runs iOS. Huge support across the industry for this one type of chip with its instruction set architecture. Now if you go back a few generations, the important ones that we've had recently were ARM v6. And ARM v6 was what you found actually in the very first iPhone and also what you found in a lot of feature phones. Remember the ones with the buttons, the Nokias with Snake and everything like that on it. And in fact it's even used today still in the Raspberry Pi Zero. So if you buy a Raspberry Pi Zero, only costs you $5. It's actually got a full 32-bit CPU in there. It can run Linux using the ARM v6 architecture. Now, of course, after that, you got the ARM v7, which was the last 32-bit architecture, added other things like some additional floating point stuff and virtualization and a, a way to address more than four gigabytes of memory. And then, of course, we had ARM v8, which moved everything over to 64 bits. Now ARM is ready to launch ARM v9, the architecture, this design that's going to carry us forward for the next 10 years at least of ARM CPUs. Now exactly what's in ARM v9 is not fully revealed, but we know a few things. One is that they are pushing the idea of uh, machine learning, and to do that, they're gonna take the SVE2 uh, extensions, that's the SIMD instructions that you find for kind of uh, HPC, for the sort of high-powered computing, and they're bringing that down into ARM v9, so that it kind of can be using everything from a, a, a smartphone all the way up to a supercomputer. You get access to these uh, special vector instructions which are great for machine learning, also great for kind of DSP stuff, and bringing that down to the level that everything can use it, from a 5G kind of stuff right way up to a supercomputer. And we also know they're concentrating heavily on security, because we've all had big security problems over the last few years with Heartbleed and Spectra and all these other kind of uh, bugs that have been knocking around, and they in themselves, when we've tried to address them, they've caused performance issues. So ARM are saying, well, in V9, we're going to bring in some hardware stuff that actually really helps to combat against these kind of problems, including memory tagging, something that was actually already been uh, introduced in Android uh, 11, and also some other things, particularly this idea of, of Realms. Now, Realms is a new idea that ARM are bringing into ARM v9, which basically says, if I want to run a, a, a piece of software, I can run it in its own realm, which is heart security hardened. So it can't leak out of it at a hardware level. So not just at a software level, where you're trying to be clever with how you write the software at a hardware level, it can't sort of break out of its little container, its little jail there, it's running uh, there separately. So it's kind of like a hypervisor, but with extra added security to it. And you can run a whole operating system there, so you can run kind of like Android in that area, or you can run even an app that can be kind of set up to run in its own jail, in its own little realm, so that it can keep all the information in there very, very secure at a hardware level. And for example, if you had a medical app or a banking app, that could be set up in such a way that it runs its own realm. And then even if your phone has been compromised somehow, it's very hard for that malware to get access to that data. 
Arm also announced that MediaTek will be shipping Arm V9 CPUs uh, in 2022, actually in uh, consumer products. And at the end of 2021, they'll be available for sampling, which means the manufacturers and so on will be able to use them for their next level of design. So MediaTek will be one of the first companies to have an Arm V9 CPU. Now that knowledge in itself gives us some important clues about what's happening uh, in companies like Arm itself, and also in some of its partner companies like Apple. Over the last few years, sometime in mid-spring, ARM has announced its new generation of Cortex-A processors. So we had an announcement for the Cortex-A73, uh, and then the, you know, the A77 and the A78, and they often might announce new GPUs as well, new Mali GPU, maybe something to do with video decoding, a new NPU. They use this date, it's called Tech Day, to announce the new uh, designs that are coming out, which will be working with its partners, in this case, let's say MediaTek, and they'll be producing chips for it in the future. Now, if ARM keeps up with that tradition, then we can expect a similar day this year when it's going to announce new ARM Cortex-A CPUs. And we pretty much know they're going to be ARM V9 CPUs because they've now announced ARM V9. Now, if that's the case, we can expect three new uh, CPU designs. It's got to be a successor to the X1, so that's going to be the, the X2. We're going to need a successor to the Cortex-A78, so it could be called the Cortex-A79. The 9 in there might show it's the, you know, the ARM V9, or they could jump to a whole new series, the ARM uh, Cortex-A90, for example, to show it's the 9 series. And of course, we're going to need a new power efficiency core to replace the Cortex-A55, and that's because all these cores have to be at the same architectural level. You can't have one running at ARM uh, 8 and then another at ARM 9 because if a program's running on one of these, it's got to be able to migrate seamlessly to the other CPU and it's got to offer the same feature. So a replacement for the Cortex A55 could be the A59, for example, again, putting that 9 in there, or they could jump to another uh, kind of set of numbers to show this shift over now to the ARM V9 architecture. And it's highly likely that of those CPUs that get announced, the, uh, some of them will then be used by MediaTek, as they've announced, in their processors, which will then find its way into consumer products uh, in 2022. Now, we also know that Apple are very quick to take up the new ARM architectures. If we go back to ARM V8, who was the company that produced a first device with an ARM V8 64-bit processor? And it, of course, was Apple. It was quite a shock to everybody because everyone was kind of still on 32 bits. They were looking forward to 64 bits, and then suddenly, there was the new uh, chip from Apple, a 64-bit design. Now, also, when there's been revisions to the ARM V8 architecture, ARM V8.2, 0.4, uh, Apple have been very quick to use those in their new processors as well. So taking that historical fact, taking the fact that companies like MediaTek are already saying we're going to move over to ARM V9, you can pretty much guarantee that Apple will be going to ARM V9 and doing so very, very quickly. That means that the A15 Bionic, if that's going to be its name, is going to be an ARM V9 processor, and it's going to have two new types of cores in it. We're going to have a new uh, power efficiency core that will have to be a ARM V9, and we're going to have a new high performance core, several of them probably, that are also going to be ARM V9. And then, of course, moving forward, we know that there are going to be uh, new ARM-based processors for MacBooks, for iMacs and Mac Minis and so on. And, of course, they are all going to move over to ARM V9 as well. So we can expect a whole new set of CPUs and processors coming from uh, Apple uh, this year and in the years to come that will all be based on the ARM V9 architecture. Now, my only worry is that I was an early adopter in buying the MacBook Pro with the M1 processor. It is a fantastic uh, setup. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I really hope that in a few years time, if all of Apple's product have moved over to ARM V9, including the iPhone, including the iPads, including the new Macs, that I really hope that Apple don't say, oh, well, actually, if you've got one of the first generations, which is ARM V8, then we don't support you anymore. Now, they've done that before for other products. I remember I had a, a Mac Mini that didn't have a very, very long lifetime because it was a 32-bit Mac Mini. And when they moved over to the 64-bit Mac Minis, they kind of killed off that 32-bit one, and it didn't support new versions of uh, OS X, as it was called then. And I really was quite annoyed about that. And I really hope that Apple don't do the same thing again because I've got this MacBook Pro with the M1. Uh, please, Apple, if you're listening, please don't make that obsolete quicker than really you should. 
And before I go, I just want to point you over to the Gary Explains newsletter, monthly newsletter that covers everything that I do here on Gary Explains, also over at Android Authority. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter, and I think you'll find it worth reading. Okay, so that's about it. Arm V9 is coming. MediaTek definitely doing it. You can pretty much guarantee that Arm are going to release some new Cortis A designs based on Arm V9 this spring. And if they're doing that, then you can pretty much guarantee that Apple are on board as well. Apple aren't discovering about Arm V9 now by watching my video. They've had all this information for a long, long time. And you can pretty much guarantee the A15 is going to be based on Arm V9. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Best thing to do is not rely on the recommendation algorithm, but instead to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.